Get into the action all summer long. Listen to that. Summer. Woo. The season's over. The, the NHL season's over. The NBA season's over. But there's still lots happening in sports interaction, including we got the draft coming up. We got free agency coming up for both of those sports, plus tennis, golf, whatever it is you're into, baseball, all happening right now at sportsinteraction.com slash SDPN. You can bet on those things. You can bet on free agency and draft. Exactly. And we're going to actually have to throw a bunch of props up in the Dangles Doozy section as well. Um, and I'll remember, everything's uh, you can do before games, live and play all summer long. Head to sportsinteraction.com slash SDPN or download the app to get started. It's 9 19 plus, please play responsibly. Welcome to Nailing the Apex, everyone. I'm Tim Haraney. Please head on over to Spotify. Give us a five-star rating and a follow. Same goes with Apple Podcasts. Write a review as it helps us grow the pod. You can also watch us on YouTube as well. You can follow me on social media at Tim Haraney. Joining me on the podcast today, we've got Jesse Blake and Adam Wild. Jesse, I'll start with you. How you doing? I am excellent because another Mercedes podium happened this weekend, <laughs> so that always puts me in a good mood. <laughs> Adam, and uh, how about Adam? Adam, your driver almost had points, but listen, you know, I mean, we had, I had, we had two drivers qualify in the top ten. I think we're making progress. <laughs> the one lap speed's <laughs> getting there. Progress? It's getting there. Yeah. I mean, it, it took the rain. Alpine, Alpine's so far ahead of you guys right now. <laughs> oh, it's bad. It's bad. <laughs> it's so bad. It's not man. great. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. my god! Three world champions on the podium. Max Verstappen taking the win. He equals Ayrton Senna uh, with forty-one wins. Fifth. Tying, tying him fifth on the uh, all-time wins list. Then we had Lewis Hamilton. Oh, sorry, excuse me, Fernando Alonso. Then we had Lewis Hamilton. But let's start with uh, let's start with Max. Um, he had a bird uh, stuck in his. Uh, I believe it was his brake duct, uh, if I'm not mistaken. But still managed to uh, hold on to about a seven-second lead over Fernando Alonso. Uh, Adam, have you ever had a bird stuck in your <laughs> No, I, I don't I think we're asking the wrong person. Tim, have you ever been driving an open wheel car and had any animal stuck? I actually that's actually a good I actually have. No, okay. but not the uh, okay, oh, so uh, I was working at a um I was working at a driving school and in one of our sports cars, we were going through turn one at Shannonville and there was a there was a seagull on the track. And I'm, we were like, the, the student was like hauling ass towards turn one. And I'm like, oh, God, like, I hope that seagull moves. And like, it did move, but I thought it got away. <laughs> okay, I thought it got away. And then we pull into the pits. And all I can see is like feet and wings, like oh. as the head was jammed Ooh. into the uh, radiator. And it's like its whole body was just like. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Holy smokes. I was, you know, I was surprised it was a bird and not like, you know, one of the hedgehogs that is famously yeah. always around the track. Yeah. But they always get out of the way. They're always yeah. kind of like they're there, but they're like, OK, like I'll I'll stay underground this weekend. But the weird thing is, is like I went for a run, Jesse, on uh, on on Thursday. But I was I was at the track on Wednesday, but then like I went for a run around the track Thursday evening. And on every corner there was there was groundhogs. And then mm -hmm. once the event started, you never saw a groundhog again. It's crazy. <laughs> so is that a part of like the the track crew? Do they do a little cleaning up with the groundhogs? Or do the groundhogs just know that there are cars going very fast and I need to stay away? I think they know. <laughs> wow. stay I think they know to stay away. Yeah. <laughs> right? That's incredible. But like the considering the fact that, you know, Verstappen had a bird. Uh, stuck in part of his car, I mean, still pretty impressive. But um, I don't know. Do you guys think that Aston Martin's starting to close the gap a bit? I was okay. So I'm losing a little hope. Oh. I mean, yeah. I mean, I know it was only seven seconds, but wasn't it seven seconds because there was a bird in the brake duct? Like, no, no. no it, it was. Uh, that's a legit. That was a legit uh, seven second gap. Like, because in Spain, it was twenty. It was 23 or something like that. But Max said after the race that he did have some trouble with, um, with, 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 the, with the hard tire compound and then also the medium as well, just trying to get like heat into it mm -hmm. and having it, having it stay warm. I mean, they had a lot of issues the drivers did with um, brake temperatures getting too hot, but tire warm-up was difficult. So the tires were really cold. So I think like that may have had mm -hmm. uh, something to do with it as well. So... Did Aston I, bring? They brought they brought uh, upgrades this week, right? Big time. Yeah, they brought a huge upgrade to the uh, to the front of the floor, and uh, spoke to Dan Fallows about that. Who's um, he's basically one of their engineers, big time engineers at Aston Martin. 
Um, and yeah, he just explained that, you know, they're hoping to get a little bit more uh, downforce in the way that the Red Bull utilizes their their downforce. So the mm-hmm. front of the Red Bull's floor looks a lot similar to what the Aston has now, too. I'm sorry, I should say the vice versa. The Aston <laughs> looks yeah, a little yeah, more yeah. like the Red Bull. But um, yeah, I think they I think they clawed back some pace, to be perffectly honest with you. I really do. Right now, it's it's eight out of eight for Red Bull. You know, Max has got six, yeah. Checo's got two, and I don't see in the near future a situation where seven seconds is removed by the end of the season. Like, in you- what scenarios here, Tim, do you see that Red Bull loses a race if it's not for uh, Max clipping a wall, which he'll never do because he's such a fantastic driver. We've seen him do a 360 spin and still win a race by 10 seconds. Like, I don't True. know when Red Bull's ever going to lose. True. I mean, remember, like, the wall that George Russell hit uh, during the race? I mean, Max almost you know, smoked it as well. So, I mean, there are like, and while he was leading, I mean, there are like instances where little things like that are going to happen throughout the season where he could possibly crash or there could be a retirement. And I think that's where you've got, you know, the t- a team like Aston Martin who needs to like always kind of be there so they can take advantage of those mistakes. I mean, I was talking to Dana Ricardo about this on Friday and I even asked him like if, if he thought that Red Bull could run, run the table here and win everything. And he even didn't he he thought it was a big ask for them to do that he didn't think they could do it Hmm. well i mean when do we start having that legitimate conversation like we're in austria in in a in a week and a half here and that's a race they have to win that's their home race right um you know i think i I mean i think they're gonna be i i picked up uh max and sergio in my grid rival pool uh by the way uh because i'm like yeah it's, it's a that's a red bull race right there um but i think I think the 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 thing that gets me about it is there's it's almost comedic like when when Max took a um during one of the in one of the chicanes he he popped a curb and said well almost lost it there and he's like laughing yeah, and he to the guy laughing and, on the radio yeah and yeah. like I'm like I have never ever heard especially Max Verstappen who's a very intense man but I've never heard a Formula One driver outside of like occasional Fernando Alonso comments be so casual about it on the on the thing. I mean, Daniel was always fun, but he was focused. Like Max is, he's literally walking on water right now. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like, we can have those conversations now, but they'll just be conversations because we're, I mean, it's like I brought up on the podcast a few weeks ago where it was like, I believe it was 1988. There was McLaren. They almost, you know, ran the table. It was like, they won 15 of the 16 rounds. And, and then one of the rounds, uh, I believe it was Italy, like Senna got taken out by a back marker, and there you go. So, yeah. I mean, like, it, like stuff happens, right, within a race weekend. That's why I just don't want to sit here and be like, yes, they're going right. to win everything. And that's a really hard statement to make. But And then, yes, I understand that, you know, Verstappen is operating at a seriously high level, like incredibly high. I There's I, – I even – you know, I was speaking with him about this, I – I kind of like draw to the to the fact of what he did in Monaco, and it was kind of like okay, he just kind of had to like flip that switch to activate performance, you know, to to squeeze a little bit more out of the Red Bull just to get pole position there. But then it just didn't seem like he was ever being challenged again. But he he says there's points in a race or in a weekend where he is being challenged. He said it's just we're not seeing it, but. I don't know, right. Jesse. What do you think? He's making it look it's, pretty easy, right? Like, he yeah, looks- it's so. And it, he's gotten to a level where he seems not so much disinterested because he's always going to be disinterested, but he seems kind of flippant about F one. You know, he's always like, "I can, I can take it or leave it." You know, at the end of a race, and he could do whatever. Maybe he just wants to be a sim driver from here on out. But the w- the way it's trending, it's. You need both Red Bulls mm-hmm. to to have something happen to them during the race for uh, somebody else to win. And I don't know. Do we start the conversations once they hit double digits? Is it we get to halfway? Like we need to get to 12? Do we have to get to after the summer break? I don't know. I think there's a serious shot. Both these cars run the table together. I don't know, Adam. I think like it's once they get to halfway, then we can really have that conversation. Well, I mean, maybe. I think it's going to start in Austria. And I think they're that. That's my favorite. I think that chat's got us. I mean, they're going to win Austria. That's. I mean, come on, yeah. they're going to win, and it's probably going to be one two. Um, and it's a fun track. And I don't know, man. I, I'm I'm in, I'm enjoying it. And I think 
anybody that that there is that thing out there. It's like, oh, Max Verstappen wins again. I'm bored. Whatever. Uh, they're missing the great battle for second, third, and fourth, and I think fifth too. Like there really is a a, a legitimate battle between Mercedes, Ferrari, Aston Martin, and on the outside looking in, but could easily jump into it, Alpine. Yeah. Um, you know, Alpine had some bad starts to this season. Um, and, you know, you need Gasly to, to be a little bit probably more consistent. Yeah. But as far as, like, those four teams, it's sort of a toss-up. And the fact that, you know, George Russell had, you know, sort of a bad – kind of a bad qualifying and then they had the, the – you know, he hit, he hit the wall and then he was okay, but was the car a little bit messed up afterwards and then he hit it again and – you know, I think there's there's some real drama and some real interest. And the implosion of Ferrari until this weekend has been amazing to watch. So, you know, as much as we're all like, I'm, I'm, everybody's crossing their fingers for Fernando to get another win. I am too. I want to see it. I think it's a stunning achievement what Red Bull are, have pulled off. It really, really is. And and yeah. Adrian Newey standing up there with Alonzo Verstappen and uh, Lewis Hamilton. He's got the most wins out of all of them. Uh, and I think... Uh, I think it was just – I think we, we should be in awe of Red Bull. We shouldn't be bored by it. I, I, it's like the same thing with Tom Brady. Like yeah. Jesse Jesse used to say this on the podcast all the time. It's like, why are you hating the guy so much? He, he just keeps winning. Yeah. Um, you no, know, right now we're watching the, the 90s Bulls. We're watching the Golden State Warriors on their record-breaking season. We're watching yes. the Patriots dynasty the last 20 years. You know, We're watching greatness. And those are the things we remember in sports the most when you look back. It's Lewis Hamilton's run for the last decade You know, in this sport. That's one of would have been one of the most magical things to watch. And now it's Verstappen and Red Bull's turn, and it's magic. Yeah. No, it's, it's it really is. And it's... I, I I was uh I was listening to someone talk about this earlier in the weekend and they had simply said that you know by the time you get to be you know 10 years from now you're going to look back and be like wow what a what a run yeah. instead of the time when you're in it you're like this you know isn't the greatest entertainment thing you know to watch but then when you look back at it you you have to admire like what went into that to achieve such dominance right and it's like that's where you know, that's where everybody who is really heavily invested in the sport is, you know, they actually see like how hard Red Bulls had to work to get to where they are and how hard Max has had to work to get to where he is. And it's just a really impressive thing. And I think you should, we should all enjoy it while yeah. it's here. Yeah. And, and like, hey, if someone can like challenge him or, or take him down, I mean, great for us, right? That's entertainment for us. So, yeah, hey, I'm here for it. I'm also here to see if Fernando Alonso can get that, uh, it would it be 34th win, I believe it is. Uh, but Aston Martin uh, told us after the race uh, they thought they had a fuel system issue. Uh, that was from Mike Crack telling us, and that's why Fernando, they were ordering him to, to lift and coast. Mm -hmm. Now, if he wasn't lifting and coasting, I think the race probably it would have been closer. But Alonso did say, though, in the, the press conference room that, you know, the last 20 laps for him were like qualifying laps to try and keep, uh, keep Lewis, um, behind him. Uh, Jesse, like, did you, did you ever think that Mercedes would be able to, you know, close the gap and start putting the pressure on Aston Martin? I mean, obviously Mercedes is leading or second in the constructor standings ahead of Aston Martin. Mm -hmm. I thought I thought there was a serious chance the uh, the safety car didn't kind of work in their favor. You know, if mm -hmm. if they got that that pit stop there, well, they did get it, but Aston Martin also got theirs, and there was kind of no advantage there for them. I thought Lewis could have taken advantage of that, and mm -hmm. yeah, the Aston Martin looked great, but Mercedes is caught up so quickly; they're the best at downplaying their own car. Toto <laughs> Wolff, he's a he's a master at saying that the Mercedes is it's so slow, you know, it's it's might, might as well be on a tricycle out there, and then they get out there and they might have the second fastest car right now, you know. So I'm excited to see the next upgrade package they have because if they're they downplayed this and they're already in this position, who knows if they can get uh, further ahead of Aston Martin and maybe a little bit closer to Red Bull uh, the next time around at Silverstone. Adam, what do you think? Well, I, I like I, I like what Jesse says. I think Lewis Hamilton is the king of of um, downplaying his car and talking about how much work they need to do. Even when he was winning championships, he was saying that. Um, and it is it. it I, I I have to say, given the car they had last year and the direction that they they had, they start the season off. The first quote out of the gate is Toto Wolff saying, um, 
you know, the car isn't good and the direction we've taken is the wrong one. This is before the first race, right? And we were on that. We were talking about it on this show. We were like, what? he's already <laughs> trashing the car. We haven't even seen it. And he's like, we're going to have to change direction. And they have. And again, you know, uh, I know they finished third last year. It was, a, it was a miracle they got there. It's a miracle, really, with the way that car started that they got ahead of Alpine, honestly. Alpine was solid start to finish. Uh, if they could have just kept the cars on the road, not blowing up, they're ahead of Mercedes last year. And, you know, I look at what Mercedes has done this year. You have two guys on the pole last weekend, or sorry, on the podium last weekend. You got Lewis on the po- uh, podium again this weekend. Um, and I feel like the vibes are good. Like it feels like Mercedes is starting. You've, you've started to awaken the beast. It's difficult to turn the Titanic, but if it's going your direction, watch out. And I feel like that's what they have finally figured out. And, and whatever it is that they've done, and I don't know, Tim, you probably could speak more to like what the actual change was, the side pods. People were talking about the side pods. I'm not educated enough to, enough to know what that means, but I do, I am educated in vibes and the vibes are real good. <laughs> the confidence is high. George Russell wasn't freaking out when he crashed cars. Like, sorry, guys. Sorry, guys. Like, you know, that was a uh, b- bummer opportunity. Shit happens, right? And that's going to happen. But they've been, they've been sneaky and very, very confident. Yeah. And I wonder if Aston Martin, because Mercedes just jumped over Aston Martin and the constructors. Yeah. I wonder if Aston Martin's like, damn, like we're, we weren't expecting them to be this good this quickly. I don't even think Aston Martin was expecting to be as good as they as they yeah. were to start the season. You know True. what I mean? So it's kind of like, I think from, I mean, just if I was them, I'd be looking at it from the perspective of like anything we get here is gravy because we were yeah. seventh last year. And if we can get into the top four, I mean, that would be a massive jump. But here they are battling for, you know, second in the constructor standings. I mean, yeah, I like, I, I, I think like the team is extremely happy. Like Aston Martin is for sure of the direction that they've gone in. Uh, I got to sit down and go, you know, do a one-on-one with Fernando Alonso. And again, same with him. He didn't, he didn't expect them to be this good. He, he really didn't like he, he understood what he was getting himself into and a driving factor for him was the investment that Lawrence was making at bringing in and recruiting good talent for the team um, and that's what kind of turned him on to coming over to Aston Martin. But he thought it, he thought that they were they were going to be in this position next year. He didn't mm-hmm. think they were going to be in this position in 2023. He, he didn't think that at all. And so I think for them, you know, the upgrade that they brought, it was a big one. Um, losing that Friday practice session for them was was not good because with that massive upgrade, you can't really uh, get – the amount of information, the amount of data that you need from it. And so you're, you, you kind of throw the, the balance of the car off quite easily. I mean, same with Saturday, all the wet weather running. But then in Sunday, it looked like they actually got a better read on where the car was. So they were able to accumulate data from that. But it also looked like it really worked. Like it mm-hmm. was very strong. The car looked very competitive compared to where it was in Spain. Like in Spain, you could see that they had lost performance. And then, uh, yeah, I was even speaking with Lewis about this after the race, and he even said to me that you know they've uh, Mercedes themselves they need to work harder because he said that the, the upgrade that Aston Martin had brought to the track this this past weekend was was massive, and yeah, he thinks they're going to be really tough to to to, to battle this season. So that's going to be an exciting thing, and and I, I mean, can I ask? Can I interrupt something? Yeah, I, I want to ask something. And I, uh, what's Lewis Hamilton like? Oh, he's great. <laughs> You've talked to him. Like, what's what's the greatest driver in motorsport ever like? Yeah, he's great. Yeah, yeah, he's great. He's um, <laughs> he's really he's really great to talk to. I think like, uh, you 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 have to uh, at least in my experience, anyways. I think you, you like you have to know your stuff when you're talking to him. Mm-hmm. And I think you got to come in there. You got to come in with a plan. Like, what direction do you want to lead him in, and what direction do you want you know talk to him about with certain things. Um, he's not always about the negative side of, of a conversation. So, you know, you're always, you know, trying to look for the positives in each thing that you kind of talk to him about, or at least I do, because that's just my experience that I've had with him is just always trying to make sure that, you know, keep it as positive as possible first up and then delve into the negative a little bit on the back end. But yeah, he's great. I mean, he's great. Gives you the time of day. Like he'll, you know, he'll, he'll sit and, He'll sit and chat with you if he has the time, but uh, 
don't get in his way if uh you know during his paddock walk when he when he comes in because like uh that that's like it's great man i love it because he always comes in with these like really cool outfits man (laughs) yeah i was wondering okay so i got a question for you guys and because i'm not like a fashion like connoisseur jesse is okay what (laughs) is a canadian tuxedo Oh, you don't oh, know it, that? No, no, but it's, like I really I don't know what like it, it actually like is. Like what is it? It's jeans shirt, jeans okay. jacket, jeans. Okay. Jeans pants, you know? That's okay. the trifecta. That's the Canadian tuxedo. Okay, cuz I wasn't sure if like that's what he had on when he came into the paddock on uh, whatever day I posted that picture of him. It was Friday, I think it was. Yeah, it was Friday. And he came in and I don't know if you guys saw it, but it looked like a Canadian tuxedo. I just had no idea what he was wearing, but I love that about him. I love that he turns the uh, the paddock walk into like a fashion show. I think it's pretty cool. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. I think I was talking about this with my sister who's getting into F1 and she's she's been saying that Lewis is kind of losing his Drip King title to Joe because Joe's outfits lately have been unbelievable. So he, Lewis needs to watch out because I, I think Joe has the title right now and he needs to like step it back up and get that title back. <laughs> it's big talk. Well, it yeah. is. I, I, uh, I know like uh, Joe's got himself a nice uh, sneaker collection. Like he's, yeah. he's got, some he's nice got the whole thing there. going. Yeah. Leclerc had some nice kicks this past weekend too. Oh, we're talking fashion here. I no, that's good. Let's go. Let's go, baby. <laughs> No, listen, that's part of the life, though, right? Like, there's a reason why the new Formula One game has F1 life. It's because it's not just about driving the car, which is the best part, but it's also the lifestyle, the cool cars and the and the clothes and the everything that we would all want, right? Okay, so Carlos Sainz was driving, like, so when some of the drivers come to the track for the, the weekend, and, like, I don't know what it's like in every single city that they go to. Mm-hmm. Um, I know Canada specifically, and then also, like, Miami from what I've seen, and uh, Texas as well. Like, they usually get the cars from their brands, but, like, I mean, Science had this sick Ferrari that he was driving around all that. weekend, like, drove it to the track. That was his car for the for the entire event. I mean... It's not so bad. Mike if Crack I was them, I'd be the- asking for like a classic Ferrari. Like, can you right? get me? Can you get me a Daytona? Can you get me like something crazy? Mike um, Crack had this. Uh, he's and he's the team principal of Aston Martin, but he had this Aston Martin DBX um, in this like jet yellow color, and it looks so badass, man. And I didn't really like. Like, I like the DBX, but I'm like, like I'm not like in love with it. Mm-hmm. But like this color combo and then like the caliper, like the caliper color matching the yellow. Like, it was so awesome. Man. It's pretty cool. So awesome. Yeah. But anyways, one of my favorite regardless. car things about F1 drivers is for the longest time, Max would always just drive a normal Honda, to, like a Honda CRV or a Honda Civic or whatever yeah. to the racetrack <laughs> on, on some weekends because there was Honda Red Bull and he would just drive a Honda and he seemed so content with it. And it was so Max. Like it fits his personality to just drive up in a crv to the racetrack yeah. yeah i think like some of them had like honda like i don't know if the drivers did might have been the team personnel because like when you when you're driving so when you're driving down the rowing basin that's kind of where you park and you mm-hmm. park on the side of the rowing basin so you're like on the you're parking on the grass and um it has like signs it has like hey this is where alonzo's parking this is where leclerc's parking etc and then it's got team personnel and then I'm assuming that's like uh, team principals, uh, sporting directors, that kind of thing. And it's like <laughs> some of them had like uh, Honda Accords and Dodge Chargers. Yes. And I'm like, yes. who's driving the Dodge Charger? Yes. I want to know that. <laughs> that is awesome. That's amazing. Incredible. <laughs> so, yeah, that's some, some stuff yeah. off track. But on track, we, we, uh, we, we digress. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, Charles Leclerc. Uh, you know, coming home fourth, Carlos Sainz fifth. Good recovery drive from those two guys. I mean, Ferrari. Don't you dare pass him. What's that? Don't you dare pass him, Signs. <laughs> Team orders. <laughs> Stay but behind can, them. Uh, but I can kind of like I can under like I can understand why, right? Like it's it, it's you need to get some good points. It's been a struggle, you know, the past few races. Um, I mean, it's been. I don't want to say it's been a disaster, but it just hasn't been good for them. And I think like for Leclerc, like 
got to get start building the confidence back. I mean, there was the team strategy issue during qualifying. Like I, he came in, he came in from qualifying at the end of, uh, oh, what was it? The end of Q2. Oh man. I've never seen, I've never seen Leclerc that frustrated before. He was so frustrated. Yeah. Never seen that. Never seen that from him. Like he's usually, he's always really calm, cool, collected. Doesn't get too emotional. Like he's very, he's, he's good to talk to, but he was very, very frustrated and I could see why. Uh, just messing up that strategy in uh, d- during qualifying. And then in the race, though, they both had a great drive. Both of them did. And I think like I think that car is on the right path, Adam. I really do. Well, okay. So first off, I, I, I don't know if you caught them, Tim, because you were there. But the radio call with Charles right after qualifying was crazy. Like even the one that made the television, which is usually the, the most PG rated one. Yeah. I was like, wow, he's pissed. And yeah. You know, obviously, there's always going to be those rumors swirling about, well, is Charles going to leave Ferrari? And we've talked about this. Where's it going to go? Who's going to get a better program in place? Ferrari's clearly in a transition stage. But what was very cool for them, and I admit that I, I have a hard time cheering for Ferrari because their fans are just so intense. It must be like what it's not like to not be a Leaf fan. You know what I mean? It's oh, like yeah. it's they're cheering for the Dallas Cowboys, right? They're yeah. cheering for the New York Knicks. But the the... The thing that, you know, I thought that they did really, really well was they used the car to its advantage and they were able to kind of pull Charles up pretty quickly into that, you know, into the spot that he ended up and they didn't fight each other. You know, like this, this is a team that is not in a position to let guys race. And, you know, I can't imagine. And I think Charles probably really nice guy. I think Carlos really, they, they both seem like really great people, but you got to have an ego to race at this stage. And I, I, I was really, really impressed with the frustration. Usually when a team, when, when players, star players on a team are that frustrated, they start racing or playing for themselves. You know, f- you know, screw everybody else. I got to survive here. And credit to Fred Vasseur and his team and, and the drivers themselves for holding it together and going, no, this is what we're going to do. And we're going to go as a team. And they got a really, I wouldn't say it's a Ferrari result. I don't think they're happy with it because I expect that they want to be one and two every race as well. But I got to say, that was hats off to them. That was a good, good team race. I don't know. Yeah. It, it, it was boring. When do you ever hear Ferrari having a boring, ah, there's no events? They're usually the story, right? And it's usually bad. <laughs> God, they almost went to plan X. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Anyway, that's I just. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> I think sometimes those radio calls, it's like, you're just messing with me. I, I know that that's just not a, that's not a real thing. <laughs> no, I think like with the with the upgrades that they brought to to Spain, they've taken you know they took a, a big step back, only to take a, you know steps forward. And uh, you know, Clary Leclerc even said that to me on Thursday, where it's like with this uh, aerodynamic direction they've decided to go in, they're losing. They've they've lost a bunch of time, but they've also helped themselves take the car in a, in a better direction where they can develop it more. Where the direction that they were on, the development, the window of the car, the balance of it was starting to shrink and the performance mm-hmm. of that car was starting to shrink and there wasn't really a bigger window where you look at the Aston Martin, it's a great platform. You can build a lot of performance on it. I think with this uh, new Ferrari and the new direction that they've gone in, yeah, it's good. It's a good, a good direction for them. And that's a, I think that's a good result for them this weekend too. I don't know. Jesse, what do you think? Yeah, I I find it interesting whenever like Leclerc's on the radio and he'll give the team orders cuz cuz there's a there's an incident there where they they say hey, a box this lap for I think it was the, he wanted to switch them on to the mediums and mm-hmm. Leclerc said no, I'm going to stick out a little longer on the hards and they say okay, stay out, stay out and Ferrari more than any other team it seems defaults to the driver and i think it's because they need to gain back leclerc's confidence they need him to trust the team so they need to default to like hey okay charles wants this he wants to stay out we got to listen to him here and i feel like that's what ferrari's just doing now and they're, they're going to gain back their trust and a good working relationship with their driver yeah and i think well like, like i when i look at science like he's his race, like his race craft has been really strong this season. Like it's been stronger than Leclerc's. Um, and you could see it in, in Sunday's Canadian Grand Prix where, you know, again, science with, you know, starting obviously behind Leclerc because of the penalty that he'd gotten for impeding, um, Pierre Gasly and qualifying on the Saturday. But that being said, 
Um, I thought he drove a really good race. I thought it was smart for them to hold him back only because, hey, we need points here. And if I, you know, if you know, the team decides to let them uh, do battle with each other, you may lose all your points. So I think mm-hmm. it was, I think it was a good move by the team to just make sure they held Carlos back. But, you know, it's interesting. Like, Carlos is a very um, intense competitor. Mm-hmm. You know, like when I sit down and, and talk to him, I can just see that in his eyes. Like, that guy's like, he's hungry he's hungry that guy's hungry and so i think when that car gets into a a window where both drivers are are happy and same with the mercedes drivers and then same with the aston martin drivers and then you pull red bull back in man we're gonna see like some stuff happen here i think like it it's it'll get good it's just gonna take some time but man oh man this that guy has a fierce intensity um sergio perez yeah man (sighs) <sighs> is he actually in trouble? Like, I think it was, uh, there was somebody who was, who was again going off. Oh, well, they might have to replace him. I'm like, I, I mean, he did climb back up pretty good. Yeah. I like, you got to make like, it to Q3. Like you got to get to Q3. Got to get to Q3. Come on. In no, that car. Right. You're right. Yep. Yeah. You got to be, got to be Q3. Yeah. I think, uh, I think you got to be at least top four, if not top three. I know that the conditions were, were difficult, and I know Sergio was, you know, chasing the balance of the car. But this is this is the third race in a row where it just this has not been good for him. And I think, mm-hmm. you know, I do, do. I think will they just go and replace him? You know, no, mm-hmm. I don't think that they would do that. I think they would let him see out the rest of the season. But like at the same time, you know, I would like to see him back in Formula One next year and you know, for him not to like lose his seat if that were ever to happen. Like, I think he's a really good driver. And I think for him, he just, I don't know if it's, I I don't know if it's like, you know, Red Bull bringing an upgrade for the car and Sergio basically being like trying to figure out how to use it for himself. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, if, if he's just, uh, if he's just, uh, you know, overcome with too much pressure. It just mm-hmm. can't piece the weekend together. I don't. I don't really know what exactly it is, but I spoke with him after the race, and you know, he felt that like it was it was really challenging for him to to get the car to to work right for him all weekend, and it kind of started on the Friday, and it just kind of spiraled all the way through to the Sunday, where I think for for him, it's it's all about that Friday to make sure he he gets that car dialed into where he wants it, so he can be competitive on the Sunday. So. Mm-hmm. Well, and it's it's a car that's really built for Max, isn't it? And Max has got a very specific so. style. Yeah, I think so. I, but he was, but Sergio was just so good at the start of the season. Mm-hmm. You know, and mm-hmm. it's just uh, they they haven't like introduced like a, a massive upgrade. You know, they not no. unless haven't needed it. <laughs> yeah, like they <laughs> yeah. haven't introduced. Yeah, they haven't they haven't introduced anything that's like huge. So mm-hmm. I just don't I don't know where he's where he's losing it. That's my only thing. And I remember when we were going into Miami with this thing, I was all jacked up, man. I thought we were going to like, I thought we were going to see Sergio Perez lead the world championship. It really was. I was so excited. We're heading into Miami and the guy's driving well. And I'm like, yes, Sergio, let's go, man. It hasn't, hasn't been good. Um, Adam, uh, in seventh place. Woo. (laughs) I told you Albon's got it. I told you. I said. I said it. <laughs> Man, what a you listen, did. Tim. In hockey, it's usually the opposite. Whenever I have a take that's a little outside the box, it's like, oh no, whatever you said, it's the exact opposite. This is the first time where I've actually had something go my way, which I'm thrilled about. And I honestly, man, like Albon staying out there for 50 plus laps on the same tires. Come on. Yep. That's spectacular. <laughs> That is, God. like, give the guy a car that do- is not horrendous. Like, and I feel bad for Williams saying that. I want Williams to be better. But, like, this guy, he was pretty good with Red Bull, almost won a race. Um, and I just think he was probably a little too green. But, like, I, I don't I don't know who would lose their spot. But he sure feels like a guy that's not going to be at Williams much longer. I agree. He was fantastic. I mean, a one-stop strategy. But on top of that, to keep to keep, like, that... DRS train oh. like behind mm-hmm. 
It's crazy. Out of the hairpin, crazy. Jesse. Oh my oh, god, it was, it was incredible. It was incredible. Like last episode, uh, we did we did the list, the top ten list, and there are. <laughs> Two drivers that I think need to be dropped down. It's it's George Russell, just for the fact that he makes the spatial awareness comments and then he goes out and he hits a wall and then he's out of the race. Like how serendipity for George there. Like you got your comeuppance this race. So he would be dropped down the list. Checo because he has the best car in the world and he can't finish in the top four. And then Albon definitely deserves that bump. It was a fantastic drive in that car. And you see what his teammate does and he's way down at the bottom and it's becoming, you know, uh, it, it's not Latifi uh, Mazepin territory, but on the other, other half of Williams, that's what it kind of is. And Albon's just fantastic and he's doing yeah. his thing. So all credit to him. Yeah. And just like trying to keep everybody behind him, like I think you know that car was very, uh, very trimmed out for the straightaways. So I think they had a yeah. good, I think they they made a good call on um, on the uh, on the direction of the uh, the balance for Alex for this weekend. And yeah, got to hear from spoke with him afterwards uh, as well. And he like he just found that he needed to have a good entry into into the hairpin and a good exit and he felt like he could he could hang on to it for the rest of the race but he's got incredible car control because if you think about it you know that car being so trimmed out doesn't have a lot of downforce so yeah. like when he's when he's going in the corners the car's kind of like floating and sliding and he's got to like catch it and it pr- pr- really impressive drive from Alex like really is um they have speed this year but i don't think there've ever been or at least not since what 2015 2014 they, the braking has always been a problem for them right yeah exactly i mean if we look back to those williams days who was that it was uh massa and bottas yeah yeah that's who that was good and, team. Um, great team but they also had they also had the mercedes power but the car was good the car was really good but man i'm just so impressed from yeah. alex like he had a hell of a weekend uh esteban ocon coming home eighth um yeah, expected a little more from the Alpine, but again, mm-hmm. I think just trying to figure out where, like, w- you know, how to get the right balance with the tire for the race. It was funny. I was on the, I was doing a grid walk, and I went up to Otmar Safnauer, and and uh, since Pierre got impeded by by Carlos, he was, you know, he had to start at the back a bit, and I went up to uh, went up to Otmar and. I said to him, "Hey, I got one question for you." He's like, "Okay," and I'm like, "You know, is what's possible from your two positions?" And he's like, "Points." <laughs> and then I, like, took the, I took the mic back and I said, "Why?" And I put the mic back. <laughs> and he's like, "He's like, hey, you said you were only going to ask me one question." And then I took the mic back. I go, "I lied." <laughs> <laughs> he seems yeah. like a good guy. Yeah, he's a good guy. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's, he's a good guy. He's a good guy. He gave, he's giving me a hard time. I like it. Um, <laughs> but no, yeah, I think he'd a little disappointed that they weren't able to get. Um, uh, both cars into the points. I think Pierre did the best he could from from where he was coming home P twelve. But uh, for Esteban, he's been he's been he's been pretty impressive lately, guys. Like he's been doing really well. well I mean, he's he is the lead driver on that team. There's no question. And, and yeah, I think so. You know, Pierre is probably still trying to figure the car out. Like it's funny. Yeah. People think you just take a driver, plop them in a car. Well, you should know how to drive it, and you should be a world champion t- tomorrow. And it just doesn't really <laughs> work that way. I think Pierre has been okay. Had they not had that crash in the first, I think it was Australia, they had that crash where they took each other out. Yep. Their Alpines are a lot further ahead, and that's why I'm so yeah. bullish on them. Um, and I, I, I think Pierre had a, again, Pierre needs consistency. But Esteban, I mean, even in Force India, with a car that was really up and down, was pretty consistent. Didn't he have like a 100-point season there? Man, like, I, don't, I, think, I don't know exactly what it was, but like, yeah, it was pretty decent like he's a great drive like i don't i don't think he gets enough credit for just how good he is well it's I kind guess. of surprising that he sat a year out like once force india folded and he lost his seat uh or not folded went into uh what, what do they call it yeah yeah um he just at, at, i remember at the beginning of that first or the end of that drive to survive season they're like uh, he didn't find a seat for the next upcoming year and i remember thinking like really mm-hmm. did anybody look at 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 his as his resume like nobody nobody mm-hmm. Like Williams, nobody, mm-hmm. um, and and so I think I, what I like about him is his consistency, and they need that. Uh, they need to start building confidence. Like Mercedes has the confidence right now. Ferrari, 
uh, I think they feel better, but I wouldn't call them confident. Alpine needs that. I think the way Fernando left and the way he was talking about the team last year, as much as I love Fernando and, and, and the story of him this year, it can't help when a legendary world champion driver is constantly shitting on the team and on the product, even if it's true publicly. And so, you know, I think that they need to find their groove a little bit. Um, and I, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of Esteban and I know that he's sort of, um, he's sort of still an underdog, right? Mm -hmm. He doesn't like it's no one pays attention to him in the way I think that they should given his results. He should be a star up there like Carlos, like, uh, um, like Charles, like Lando. I mean, freak Lando Norris is a big star. McLaren is a terrible car. Uh, but I, maybe Alpine's just not as sexy a brand in North America. Right. I mean, it's, it's you know, what, maybe it's different in France. Mm-hmm. Jesse, what do you think? Yeah, I, Alpine's got to be so happy with how the season's played out so far. Like, they left a couple points on the board, but when you look at the constructors right now, they're sitting with 40 points and McLaren's got 17 and 6. You know, they're they're so entrenched into fifth place right now that they got to look at the season and say, okay, if we can just maintain what we've done so far, we're going to end the year in fifth place. We're going to be happy. And that's going to that's gonna look back as a success for them, even if mm-hmm. they don't end up moving any higher. Lance Stroll uh, finished yeah. P9, started P16, if I remember correctly. Uh, he got hit with a three-place grid penalty for impeding Esteban Ocon and uh, in Quali. Uh, up and down weekend, I think, for for Lance, for sure. I mean, I know he wanted more from this being his uh, home Grand Prix Um very like I think for missing free practice one, you've got that big upgrade, and then free practice two, you're only getting like you know half of the running before you have to switch over to the wet weather tire, and then may have gone in a different direction on balance and setup maybe. But I think he had an incredible comeback drive on on the Sunday. Weird thing with Lance, he um. The, the the qualifying in, in Montreal sometimes doesn't really go well for him, but his racing is freaking awesome. Like he's always like scoring points like out of nowhere. Like it's a that's mm-hmm. a big way to go. I remember his Williams twenty seventeen. I think he went from like I wanna say it was like either P nineteen or P eighteen, scored his first points, got up to I think it was like P ten or P nine. I, I can't can't remember exactly. It was twenty seventeen. I was there for that and yeah, that was a hell of a drive too. So this is uh, definitely up there. I don't know. What do you guys think? I have, I have an off-track question first. When when Stroll when it's the Canadian Grand Prix and Stroll's there, is he treated as like the the hometown kid is coming home and he gets all of this extra attention, or are the other drivers just so much bigger in the brand because you, you have Max and you have Lewis that he doesn't get the attention that? You would think a hometown driver would at his home Grand Prix. Which has, you, which uh, side is it, Tim? If you're, you're, has, you're you were there on the ground floor for sure. Like he he has a whole grandstand section that was like sold out for for the weekend. Oh, like, that's cool. Completely sold out. Yeah, yeah. So like he does get a ton of support. Like when he gets to Montreal for sure. Um, and then also the off track activities and activations that he's got to kind of go and do and. I mean, he was he was really busy on Thursday, like the, during the media day. Like he was he was jammed, jammed packed. I couldn't even we couldn't I couldn't get a, a sit down one on one with him. I had to talk to him in the media pen, oh, wow. you know, which usually I like to I like to get the 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 real like the one to one. Like I get the one to one when mm-hmm. we're in the media pen, but like it's not the same when you're not really just like sitting down with them. It's a little more intimate, you know, you get a little more conversational. We're in the media pen. It's kind of like two questions, three questions with Aston Martin. They're great with us. They, they're like, yeah, yeah, go for it. Three questions for sure. Um, but yeah, I think it, he was just super busy, like crazy busy. Yeah. Wild. And then it's just, it, it, it's different for every driver too. I mean, like you'll like some of the drivers in Montreal, and uh, they'll they'll get huge huge cheers but just because like the fans like understand their story if that makes mm-hmm. any sense mm-hmm. and so if you look at like storylines like you know a driver either goes off or gets passed like you hear the crowd like in Canada like you actually hear you hear that 
you're in the media room and man, you like, you're far away. Like and something's happened down at, down at turn two. Like that's a long way. That's like, that's like, I want to say, I don't know, 600 meters, 700 meters from the media room, media rooms, concrete. So, but you can still hear that. That's cool. You go and you can hear it on TV too. But like, if you go to like, you know, Azerbaijan and I'm not like crapping on any of the races, but if you go to like, you know, another race like Bahrain or something, you don't really hear that. Mm -hmm. It's just different. Yeah. I'm not surprised in Montreal that it's that loud, but, but it's like, it's like the fan is like, understands the backstory. Oh yeah. Right. Like they, like they know the story, but then they also know everything else that's going on there too. Like it's Mm -hmm. a very educated fan base that, that comes to the Canadian Grand Prix every year. Um, and so that's why it's like, it's, it's hard, it's hard to say like, cause everybody gets cheered for no one ever gets booed, but there's, there's always tons of cheering going on, but yeah, for Lance, he's got his own, he had his own, um, section of track. <laughs> that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah. I mean, wow. I, I wouldn't mind that. That's pretty cool. No. And he <laughs> finished in the points. Like, listen, it was his best yeah. finished in Montreal. Was it not? Uh, if I remember it's, it's like he either tied it or it's the, his best. I, I, I want to say, I, I just can't remember. I can't remember exactly. Cause like 2018, he crashed out 2019. He had an, like this epic, uh, long run to score points. And then he did it again in last, last year to score points Had another, like one of those extremely long runs. And then this year, when they pitted him for the second time, I actually thought that I thought that that was it. I thought, yeah, he's he's done. He's there's no way he's scoring points because he's he's dropping back to the last place. I'm like, there's no way he's going to be able to fight his way forward. And somehow he was able to make the hard tire last so much longer, and then mm-hmm. still have performance in it. Um, yeah, it was a hell of a fight back from him. I thought it was a really great race by him. Uh, Valtteri Bottas also had a very great race. Uh, that guy over the past few races has really started to turn things around here, guys. <laughs> I mean, he kind of needs to. Uh, uh, yeah. Alpha, I mean, listen, we, we expect them to be in sixth or seventh, but they really didn't have a great start to the point where, you know, you have a couple like, I mean, look at what's happened to Alpha Tori, right? You know, mm. one good Williams race in their last place. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's the first time that, that Williams hasn't been last place in a very long time, like mm-hmm. ever. Uh, it's been, it's been better part of a decade that they've been running back. Um, Alpha Romeo is not that far ahead mm-hmm. and, and Valtteri is a qualifying God like that. That's the guy you need to be, you know, like that's how mm-hmm. you're going to set And, 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 uh, and I, I don't know, man, to me, it's nice to see it happen. And I'd like to see them sort of turn it around because they do need to start ramping up to when they become Audi and, you know, the Sauber, Sauber group. Um, and it, they're, you know, they, they, they have some stiff competition ahead of them. Like, listen, McLaren, as much as we make fun of them, isn't going to be in the back forever. We know that, uh, they're in a transition stage. Sauber is bringing on Audi and Audi, the Audi people are watching this going like, come on, like, maybe be better beforehand. So our debut season actually is awesome. And you've got Alpine, Ferrari, and Mercedes to leapfrog, never mind Red Bull. I think it would be nice to see Alfa Romeo be the best of the rest. Like, you know, they're the back of, you know, best of the back of the pack, but they've got to really sort of get their, their stuff together if they're going to take out McLaren, which is, I think that they, that has to be their target. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Um, also, they have a better car than McLaren. Let's be honest. Like it's better. It's faster. <laughs> Speaking of McLaren, Jesse, uh, Oscar Piastri finishing eleventh. Uh, what do you think? <laughs> ah, it's it's been a difficult year for him, and like I expected more from Piastri coming in. Like it was it was an all right drive. Like I don't think there's anything uh, particularly impressive or. Um, like problematic with his drive. It was just all right. And I expected more from the entire McLaren team and Piastri in particular with, with all the hype around him coming in. I thought he'd be further ahead at this point. It's going to take time to learn the car, but I expect towards the back half of the season, we're going to see more out of both McLaren drivers and Piastri in particular. I know uh, I, 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 I'm going to save uh, Lando Norris. I'm just going to get this one thing in real quick about Piastri. I thought, um, 
I thought I thought he rebounded quite well after you know the disappointment from his qualifying crashing in Q3. He did make it pretty far in some really tricky conditions. Uh, uh, he's I, I like him. I yeah. think he's uh, yeah. I think he's he's got something. I really do. Like he's. I think there's something really there. And I think like once he starts to figure this this whole thing out, I mean, I think he's really going to push Lando. I really do. Uh, mm-hmm. I think that's a good driver pairing for the future, for sure, if Lando decides he wants to stick around. Um, but yeah, Lando getting slapped with that five-second uh, time penalty, Adam. He comes home finishing 13th. We're going to skip past Gasly because we kind of already talked about him. But yeah, um, Lando, thoughts? Explain unsportsmanlike. <laughs> Explain that to me, because man, okay. First off, he raced the hell out of that car. He and 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 you know what's funny about Formula One? In a lot of sports, you watch the 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 underdog team or the team that shouldn't be there usually gets the calls going their way. In Formula One, you have to be winning to have the calls go your way. Like they're not going to call an unsportsmanlike on Max for stopping. They're just not. The press yeah. would eat would eat Red Bull and Max alive, and they know that. But but they can do it to Lando because well I mean it, it is unsportsmanlike in their in their technical definition and who's going to complain about McLaren uh, except for me and I think yeah. he deserved the top ten finish he deserved to be yeah. there it's frustrating yeah. for I mean can you explain that rule Tim because I yes. didn't get that at all. I've never seen that it's the it's the wording that they decided to to go with but it is like. It is a rule that they haven't really enforced too much. So, well, uh, there's been a few other races that's kind of happened this season, but teams trying to double stack the cars under safety car or, or virtual safety car. Uh, but with the virtual safety car, you have to keep like a minimum, like you have to kind of keep your exact distance. You can't really accelerate, decelerate where mm-hmm. safety car you know, Lando has Oscar in front of him and then coming out of pit lane, or sorry, excuse me, coming out of the hairpin, uh, Lando actually slows a bit. So it was a three, it was a three second gap between the two of them. But by the time they got to the end of the straightaway, uh, heading towards pit lane, it was about seven second gap. And that's where the issue is because then that screws the guys behind you on on this whole situation as well right and so Mm -hmm. they mclaren was trying to double stack the cars and so that's why they gave lando um the the penalty the unsportsmanlike penalty i think it was the the wording they may want to work on they may want to think about (laughs) changing that because uh, i I think like out of all the drivers he's he's the least uh likeliest to be (laughs) unsportsmanlike he's actually pretty He's pretty fair. Uh, so, yeah. But it's- I it, here's the thing, though, with the, the penalty is, is that if, they, if they've if they decided to use it once, mm-hmm. you, now you got to use it again. Yep. W- okay, so will we see that again? You got it now. Like, I mean, if you're the FIA, like if the stewards, right, yeah. if you want consistency, and that's what the drivers have asked for over the past few seasons – I mean, after 2021, it became like even bigger mm-hmm. that, you know, consistency, right? And mm-hmm. so if you're going to make a call like that, then now the teams are, they're going to be expecting you to make that call. So here we go. Oh, okay. <laughs> so right? like, so they're all who, doing it. Who at the back of the pack are they going to be picking on then? <laughs> who knows? I mean, they're all doing it, man. Like all of them are doing it. So it's. It, 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 I can't believe I couldn't believe it when I saw it. I was yeah. like, "Hold on a second here." I'm like, and as soon as I saw like the wording of it too, I was like, "Wait, what? Why? Okay, this doesn't no, no." And then mm-hmm. I looked into it a little further, and it just didn't really, it didn't make a ton of sense to me. So I, I have to say, like, it, if you're going to do it once, now you got to do it moving forward. I think for for everything to keep it yeah. fair, yeah, uh, for, for the most it, it part, it didn't um, feel illegal. Like no, it didn't. I, he didn't. He didn't drop so much below the delta. I guess that it was. It, it felt like he was doing something illegal during the safety car. Right? He wasn't so slow that he was holding up the entire safety car train. It was just <laughs> you're coming into the pits and you want to slow down so you can double stack. That feels like a very normal thing that happens throughout races. Yes. Yeah, but you're also like you know slowing the cars behind you. Right. Mm-hmm. So you're you're holding them up 
as well. Like you're impeding, like you're not impeding. What's the word I want to use here? But you're you're getting in their race. Like you're getting in the way of their race by doing that as well. Mm-hmm. Where like they but, may have the same thing, right, Jesse? And then that's going to like cascade where it's just going to keep, it's like a domino. Like they'll all yeah, start. Yeah, but then they all it. catch up to each other eventually under the safety car. <laughs> like, is that, you is that think, not how it works? The, you, you, would, you would think. <laughs> I don't know. It Heading over to it, Twitter. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it, it, they took away a great race from Lando. And it's unfortunate because yeah. he was yeah, very, especially so. towards the end when yeah. he was, when they were chasing, going down to the very end and he, he has this terrific uh, last few laps. I don't know. It took away from just a spectacular drive from him. Yeah. I wanted to ask you about this, Tim. I yeah. saw Mika Hakkinen was interviewed and, you know, world champion, McLaren driver, legend. Um, he was saying, and this was, it, you know, typical F1 press, right? Completely out of context. But he was saying that with the upgrades he believes that they're going to bring by the end of the year, that they'll be able to match Red Bull in straightaway speed. That's what he said. That didn't mean cornering. That didn't mean breaking. That didn't mean anything else. He thinks they'll be able to match Red Bull in straight ahead speed, straightaway speed. What do we, uh, what do we think? <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, anything's possible. I, it could happen. Sure. Um, the Red Bull's really, what I've been noticing lately is really handy coming out of the corners, especially the slower speed ones. Mm-hmm. They do better at that than anyone else. Yeah. And they're also starting to get better at the in the in the braking zones at the same time. And the straightaway speed for them is still pretty, still really good. Like it hasn't mm-hmm. really changed much. It's still strong. It's not necessarily like the straightaway speed that they need, right? Like they just need downforce on the car. Like they just yeah. don't even have enough downforce on the car. So if you're going to put more downforce on the car, your straight straightaway speed, straight line speed, it's uh, it's going to decrease a bit. Mm-hmm. So I'm not too sure who. Uh, hmm. I mean, Mika's listen, it, to there, but. Mika Hakkinen, it, you know, he's probably he, paid propaganda at this point, and that's well, okay. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong he, with that. It could also be taken out of context of what he was trying yeah, to say, right? A thousand percent. I've seen some like quotes lately where I'm like, "Hold on a second, buddy!" Didn't say that, and then I click on the actual art- article and I see what you know the individual actually said, and I'm like, "This got to be kidding me." Yeah. Um. <laughs> questions from uh twitter uh okay josh cooper wants to know what's it like seeing a martin brundle f1 grid walk happening live around you while you're trying to work <laughs> and did you see him go into a full sprint yesterday actually we were in it we were in his his grid oh. walk and i tried to get the hell out of his way <laughs> oh yeah i was doing my own and i saw him coming oh. His camera's hot and he's running and I got mine and I'm going in his, like I'm coming towards him. He's coming towards me. I'm like, I'm getting out of the way of this one. <laughs> That's so much fun. Wow. <laughs> oh man, the grid was a lot of fun. I got to do it three times now and it's uh, it keeps getting more and more enjoyable. Um, From Nick Ignatov, do you think Albon could be a top driver, Adam? given the car to support him or is he kind of locked into the midfield like a Kevin Magnuson or a Nico Hulkenberg? Do I think he can be a top flight driver? Yeah, I think he's, uh, listen, he's going to be, it's going to be tough for him to find a team unless like Audi takes a swing at him or something like that. Like a big, you know, cause it, we're going to find out in the next couple of years who the new big teams are. Right. Mm-hmm. It's usually the big three, right? Mercedes, Ferrari, and whoever else decides to be big that year. Uh, but what we're seeing now with these cost caps and stuff is the field is compressing. Everybody's getting a little more competitive, at least at the top. I just want to know who he's going to race for or who he would replace at one of the bigger teams. Like Williams, to me, they still seem like they're, they always seem like they're a decade out, right? Like they're, mm-hmm. it's like, well, they're going to need some time. Yeah. Uh, they know they've got super outdated facilities, so it's not there. Is it Sauber? Because that's the only other place that I can see where he would jump in. I know he's still part of the Red Bull Academy. Unless the other thought is, if Perez goes, Mm. which he will at some point, Verstappen's going to stay, does Albon slot back in as Max's second driver and try to push him? Well, that goes to our next question from at the Sport Verdict, who wants to know what the growing uh, discrepancy between Perez and Verstappen 
Is Red Bull on the precipice uh, of looking for a replacement secondary driver? I mean, isn't every team always on the look for drivers? Yeah, <laughs> that's the way I kind of that's the way I kind of answer that one. But at the same time, they, yeah, I can see what I can see what they're saying. I wonder if they would keep Alex around, and, you know, because they got Ricardo, and then you know he's going to do a he's going to do a tire test here after the British Grand Prix next month. And I think they'll, they'll Red Bull will get a better understanding of like what his form is like. Can he mm-hmm. come back to what he used to be? And that's what Daniel actually said to me on the on the on the Friday when we were chatting. Was you know he he was saying like I think like one of the things is, is trying to see if I can get back to where I was before mm-hmm. um, during my Red Bull days and seeing where that seeing where that is. And I think that's what the team's looking at as well. If he's able to do that, then I. I don't know. That's tough for Albon, right? Yeah. Because yeah. like you got, you, I mean, like a, a Ricardo on form is, is really damn good. So, but do you think he'll ever get back there? Um, I don't know. It's a good question. I, cause he, he would I, technically, wouldn't he have to get it by this, the end of this year? Cause yeah, two years so. off from formula one would be pretty hard to come back from. Would it not? Yeah, I agree. I, I think he would like, I think, I think it's going to be a really important test for him. He's probably mm-hmm. going to get another, another time in the car too. Probably just not that one. You get the sense um, that Christian and helmet really like him too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think everybody, like everybody there really does like him. I mean, he's a very likable person. I, I just, um, I just wonder if like the hunger is still, you know, burning deep inside of him, you know, mm-hmm. like, I just, I don't know. It'd be, I, I hope it is. I, I'd love to see him back in. I'd love to see him back in F one. Me um, too. Kicking ass, taking names. Me too. Uh, what do we got here? How long till we see Polo into F one? Jesse <laughs> from at Wolf Cola. <laughs> I are there F one seats available? Like we're going through all the drivers and we're like trying to see who's going to switch around. It's like okay. I don't know. De- De- uh, Nick DeVries is probably going to stick around. He's probably going to get a longer shot than this. Logan Char- Sargent hasn't been great in his adventures here in F1, but I don't see any driver leaving the field anytime soon. Mm-hmm. It's probably one of those guys who just got in here. So I'm not sure who would be on their way out just to make room. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, yeah. So Alex is uh, just coming off a win at Road America, leading the uh, IndyCar Championship. Uh, I didn't get to watch the race. I heard it was <laughs> awesome, though. Um, Adam, you got to interview Roman Grosjean beforehand. I did. I did. And and I think Will Power was really mad at him. <laughs> I don't know oh, if yeah. you saw that, but Will Power was pissed. <laughs> but uh, my boys at Arrow McLaren finishing third. Uh, Pato Award. Just saying. Big thumbs up. <laughs> Hundred uh, percent. From uh, Austin Khan. Also, again, should Pelot look past McLaren for a seat in F one? No hate against Lance, but Pelot and Alonso at Aston could push them forward. Could it though? I don't know. No. It's tough. You take a driver out of IndyCar and you put them into Formula One. I think it's going to take a couple of years for the driver to get acquainted with everything. So it's not necessarily it's kind of similar to like what you guys were saying with like maybe an Alpha Towery move or maybe a Williams move, right? Like a, mm-hmm. that would make more sense I think if you're going to take a driver from IndyCar and put them into F1 because you want to put them at a place where they're, you know, the team is still kind of rebuilding and that'll give them a chance to uh learn at the same time. Um from Parth Lad, do you think Ferrari took a tangible step this weekend with their cars performance are they on track to be firmly in that second echelon of teams with aston martin and mercedes jesse (laughs) the ferrari car is so tricky because you're like okay they always have a good car but when are they going to mess up the strategies or it's going to be randomly unreliable and can you trust the drivers and is that an interesting uh, team to look at for a driver's change? Like, hmm. should we be looking at Signs and Leclerc a little closer and saying, okay, when do their contracts expire? Is Ferrari looking to get out of the business of either of those drivers because of the troubles that have just been coming from that team? So, like, you, they change the team tr- principle and they're trying to get new strategies. Is the next step not to change the drivers as well? Yeah, but then the team principal also wants to like build a team around Leclerc. Mm-hmm. Um, and Carlos Sainz is 
I mean, he's he's been really good. He's he's making an argument to maybe be the potential number one this season. Like he's like Carlos has been really good, and that uh, I mean, we'll see what happens with with Charles. I mean, the season is still long, and I think for for him build the confidence and see what happens for the rest of the season. But um, I wouldn't get rid of either one of those drivers. If I'm Ferrari, mm -hmm. there's no way like I think they're the best part of the team. Like <laughs> they're, they're incredible. Both of them. They're they really they are. And they, and they seem to get along too. Like you never hear about any drama between the two of them too. Right. Yeah. Never. No, never. Mm -hmm. um, gents, this was fun. Always. Always a good Thanks time. very much for uh, coming and doing this and taking an hour out of your evenings. Uh, I know you guys are busy, but I do appreciate you guys coming on and talking Formula One with me. It's uh, Jesse Blake, Adam Wild. You can catch them on the SDPN. I'm Tim Haraney. You've been listening to Nailing the Apex. Please head on over to Spotify. Give us a five-star rating and a follow. Same goes with Apple Podcasts as well. Write a review. Give us a, uh, a follow. Helps us a lot. Watch us on YouTube. Thanks again, everyone. We'll see you all later.